you, you've had some success with Ben 10. Mm -hmm. And how did that come about? Uh, how did the show come about? Yeah. Uh, a guy named Matt Sinreich, who's responsible for half of Robot Chicken with Seth Green, uh, knew us from when he worked at Wizard Magazine. Cartoon Network said they wanted to do a boys action superhero show, and did he know anybody that could do that? And for some reason, Matt's like, yeah, you should meet these man of action guys. Uh, so he literally walked us in the door. They said, we want a Fantastic Four show for young boys. And we're like, we're not going to do that. Sounds like a terrible idea. But we pitched them 20 ideas in 20 minutes that we made up over the course of three days. And literally at 60 seconds, we'd hit a stopwatch and go, that idea's done. Here's the next one. And idea number eight was Ben 10. And they're like, that's exactly what we want. So they want it on the spot. And uh, how, how much control do you guys have with that? Almost none. I mean, when you sell things to network, it is the network's project and property. Uh, so our job then is to be as creative as we can be within what they're looking to do with it. But everything from the initial pitch was in the show, so there's not a lot to complain about. They liked what it was and kept all that and just kept adding to it. But it's not your beast anymore. Do you, you guys don't, you, you were just in charge of coming up with the idea? and then it was passed on? We or? worked on the, the first four seasons of Ben 10, or four orders, I don't even know what they call them anymore, but the first set of episodes, Young Ben 10, we worked on writing a lot of those episodes. Okay. And we gave input on all kinds of stuff. Uh -huh. uh, but we were not the showrunners. Okay. And then when Ben 10 transformed into the second iteration, we had already sold Generator Rex, so that was kind of our focus, and we did work on that day to day. And then you started kind of, the work you were doing, you, you just started doing on that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we're even to this day we are consultants for Benton. If they need okay. anything from us or want anything, okay. we have to contractually provide that. Okay. Uh, like Benton Ultimate Alien, I think is called Ultimate Alien because we named it Ultimate Alien because we couldn't think of a name. So we do things like that. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So uh, you, you mentioned there's not a lot of once you give the idea out, there's not a lot of creativity on your end. Uh, there's for, a ton of creativity, but there's not any control. Okay. So okay. that's why everybody in Man of Action now publishes through Image Comics. Mm -hmm. That's where we go. I wish I could do something. I'm doing a, a book about an art forger with a Vermeer copy in you know, World War I. <laughs> that's not going to go at Marvel or DC or Cartoon Network. Mm -hmm. But I can just go, that's the book I'm doing, mm -hmm. and Image will put it out. Mm -hmm. So that's our pressure relief valve to do any kind of work we want to. You know, I'll do a kid's book one day and a 400 page graphic novel the next. So that's where you, you let it just fly. And working on like we're on the new Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, you know, that's Disney slash Marvel show and we understand what that means. Mm -hmm. Then we try to be as creative as we can within those constraints, mm -hmm. constraints, you know, how I'm emphasizing words. <laughs> But you know, a limitation is also another way to be creative. It, it kind of sparks different engines in your brain, and that's a good thing too. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I was going to ask about how you're, you're doing comics again, and uh, you, you kind of touched on all that. Uh, well, I never stopped. It's just that I don't put anything out or mention it until it's done. Uh -huh. And the people I work with are brilliant but slow. So the, the books I have coming out this year, I started in like 2007, 2004. And wow. You know, they just take a long time to matriculate. Yeah, wow. So, uh, would would you say that the, the cartoons are kind of the the day job and the comics are kind of the, the fun outlet? Or are they both paying? Or, you know, you, you talked about the, the yeah, satisfaction. I mean, we are extremely fortunate in that the Bin 10 merchandise revenue stream is healthy and global. Mm -hmm. So we don't actually have to do much, mm -hmm. but what we're doing, we choose to do. Uh, so Spider-Man pays just fine, but we don't really need the job. So we're doing it because it's fun in a different way. It's great to work with voice actors. It's great to see you know, a live action animated thing that you write come to life. Uh, and we're enjoying different parts of it. We don't need to do any of it. So anything we're doing now, you can bet we're having some degree of fun doing it. Well, that's very fortunate. That, that's very a great place to be. Very extremely knock table wood <laughs> fortunate. Yeah, yeah. Um, are, are there any... Oh, you mentioned your book that you said you're probably most famous for. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about that. Sure. When, when in the history of all this did that come out? Uh, that was... Uh, well, it, it has a weird origin story, which is I've worked... It was the same artist from House of Secrets, Teddy Christensen, who is Danish and he lives in Copenhagen. And I went to visit him and I just said, what are we going to work on now that we're done with House of Secrets? And neither one of us had any ideas at all. And I literally went to the bathroom to take a pee 
and I thought of the entire book, It's a Bird, while taking that pee, and I came out and I was like, this is bizarre, but I want to move your bathroom back to America, because I just, I literally thought of an entire book. And I sat down and I talked him through the whole thing, and literally that description is that book, except there are two pages that I added later because Teddy had drawn two sketches that I thought should be in the book. Um, so it was a magical bathroom experience. Uh, but the problem with that book is that it was a Vertigo title, which is DC's older skewing imprint, but I needed Superman to be in it, and there is an absolute no for costume heroes, and especially Superman in a Vertigo book. Uh, and I just, I was like, I've got to figure out how to make this happen. So I rode an elevator at San Diego Con with Paul Levitz, who was then their publisher, mm -hmm. and he was talking to somebody else. He didn't recognize me. He was telling them uh, he didn't know why people wouldn't bring them Love and Rockets or Bone. You know, why, why do those books wind up at other publishers? So I just went home and I wrote him a letter. I'm like, Dear Paul, I bet you wonder why people don't bring you Love and Rockets or Bone, but I'm going to tell you why. It's because you don't take risks and da da da. <laughs> And I said, you should do this Vertigo Superman book because it is my most personal work and would be you know, good for the company. To, and I don't know if he thought it was a mind reader or if he put two and two together, but he approved it on the spot and let us have Superman. And I couldn't believe it. And then I was like, we have to hurry up and do this book before they change their mind. So. That's really cool. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, so, Still can't believe that book exists. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm done. If, if there are any uh, struggles you've had in, in this industry you've cared to share that we, we haven't touched on, we can end with that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's about struggles, I think what I would say is there's not a creator I don't know who doesn't doubt their creativity. So the, the trick for me has always been to not do the same project twice. I think a lot of people at this convention are known for a type of work. And my career is, uh, for better or for worse, that you don't know what's going to happen next. You know, I, I don't want there to be a Steve Siegel book. I don't want there to be a type of book that you associate with what I do. So I will do like a slice of life followed by a horror book, followed by a black comedy, followed by a children's book. And as a result, I have zero traction, but I'm also completely unpredictable. Uh, but it keeps me not concerned about whether I'm being creative or not. I know I'm being creative. I just don't know if anybody cares, which I'm kind of okay with.